11 15 11 15 2023 11 15 2023 um feed my sheep our daily bread our daily bread feed my sheep series i've been sitting here for a while but couldn't get off the phone i was talking to some folks it's raining here also which is not a problem we should be old enough and mature enough to understand why we need rain so let's get into the word king james version bible see what thus saith the lord Ooh, deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter eight <clears throat> reads on this wise verse one all the commandments which i've commanded thee this day shall you observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore swear unto your fathers. I could spend this whole 10 minutes just talking about what I just read about. I shouldn't say talking about exhorting. Verse 8. I mean, excuse me, chapter 8 in Deuteronomy verse 1 just says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do. Let's deal with that first. All of them. You cannot pick and choose which things you're going to obey from God. You cannot, it's not multiple choice, obedience. If God say do X, Y, and Z, we do X, Y, and Z. It ain't never going to change from the Old Testament to the New Testament, Old Covenant to the New Covenant, uh, Genesis to Revelations. It's never going to Obedience is never going to change. All the commandments which I command, God commands. He don't make suggestions. And look, this is what he commands us. He commands us a blessing. Listen to what he says. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that you may live. The reason why the law and command was, was given for us to live is because Adam and Eve brought, inter death came in through their sin. So he's given us, how many of us, when you're dying and you go to the emergency room and you see the doctor and he write a script and tell you, this, you do this and you will live, flat out. You don't do it, you're going to die. How many people on this planet will listen to a doctor but ignore God? Makes no sense. We worship the creator, not the creation all the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do. You observe it so you'll know what to do. You observe it so you know what to do. That ye may live. We're going to move on. And multiply. So not just so you can live, but so you can multiply. John 10.10 10, I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. God don't just give you what you think there is. He gives you something that you can't imagine and or think. See, that's, that's the problem with the body. We get so content with the base things. And he's, not, he's, try, he's not trying to give you the base model vehicle. He's trying to give you all the bells and whistles so when they see you, they see him because they know you ain't got no business with that. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do that you may live and multiply. Live and multiply. We're going to move on. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. You're being blessed by the blood. You're being blessed by the blood. The blood of Jesus reversed back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He, he swore to them, but you're being blessed by association. Oh. Excuse me. Verse 2. <laughs> and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. We go, with, go through situations and circumstances to be humbled, not to be broken, not to be destroyed, 
Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due season. You got to understand when you're being humbled. When, you hum when you're being humbled, you don't clap back. You don't talk back to the preacher, the prophet, your husband, those that have to rule over you. When you're being humbled, it's God that's doing the humbling. Ain't nobody got it out for you. The devil, he, he, he didn't have it out for Job. He wasn't thinking about Job. The devil ain't thinking about you if you're living right. He's thinking about the ones that ain't living right because he know he can get them. You think he want to fight? He don't want to fight. He want to get somebody he can get. So when you're being humbled, you're being humbled by God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. It says, and thou shalt remember in verse 2, all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. Them folks didn't allow themselves to be humbled and they end up being lost forever. Not just in the wilderness, but for eternity. So when you don't allow yourself to be humbled, you, you, not, you, you, you're risking not only death, but eternal death. He says, let me read it from the beginning again. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. <laughs> so you're getting exposed when you're being humble. When you're being, let me make it personal, let me make it real. I deal with situations and circumstances where people where God will use me in my office, which people know my office. Everybody know me, know me, I'm, I'm a preacher. I drive a Jesus van, I wear Jesus clothes. So when I'm operating in my office, occasionally God will use me to speak and share things. Now, based, based off of a person's response to what God used me to share, it will reveal to me what's in their heart. Your clap back or your response lets me know everything I need to know about what's inside your heart. I didn't know your heart to now that I see you're not, you're not willing to be humble. But because you're not gonna be humble, now God has, he didn't say his word through his people, through me, through whoever. And now you're not humbling yourself. Now you're going to have to get humbled because you will. The Bible says every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. We ain't no different. Judgment starts at the church. He says, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. So it's supposed to be a humbling experience. And it wasn't supposed to take 40 years. It's supposed to be 11 days, but that wasn't enough. So it had to be 40 years to prove thee to know that was in thine heart. God already knows what's in your heart. He's trying to show you you so you can choose between the flesh and the spirit. When you realize your stuff stink, it's up to you to allow yourself to be washed with the wash of the word. When you're exposed and you realize you're not doing the things you're supposed to do, you allow your, the word to wash you, repent to God, ask forgiveness from people, and allow the word to wash you so you can stay in position, King David. When Nathan said, thou art the man, David didn't clap back. He didn't, he didn't stick his chest out and say, I'm the king. Who you think you talking to? That's what Saul did. That's why David got his position. Let me help you understand something. I'm going to say this clear as I possibly can. This is prophetic because I'm all off the, the Bible, but I'm exhorting from the scripture. There is a replacement for all of us. There is an Esther for every Vashti. There's a King David for every King Saul. There's a replacement for Judas Iscariot. They cast lots to see who would take his place. So if you think you're so special, and if you think you're just going to get removed from your place and you're going to go on and have a nice little life, you're wrong. Read about all the people I just talked about. They didn't go on to have a good life. And, and the majority of them probably didn't even make it to heaven. Stop playing with God. If he's humbling you, be humble. Humble yourself under the mighty. Quit trying to do stuff your way. That's what happened with the children of Israel. Read Deuteronomy chapter 8. I only got the two, two, three verses of scripture. That's all I got to. God is trying to tell you something. God bless you.